Good morning and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Courtney Kibitza and joining me today is Bob Robinson. Bob, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. I brought Bob on today and I'm excited to talk about a topic that I think is uh, near and dear to both of our hearts. We attend a lot of these and we spend a lot of time at trade shows, so I'm excited to share some tips that we have for you guys and Bob as well um, on what to do before a show, at a show, or after a show so you can make the most of the money and the time that you're spending at these events. So Bob, let's have a seat and let's give some tips and talk about some things That's to our good. viewing audience. So Bob, I think it's fair to say you've uh, attended and exhibited at quite a few trade shows, probably upwards towards the thousands, it feels well, like. Well, maybe, maybe not quite that many, but pretty, quite pretty a few. Close. So I'm sure you have some tips. What do you think, um, let's talk about before the show, what do you think some things are most important when you're coming to planning and getting ready for the show day to come? Yeah. Well, you want to pick a show that, that uh, is, is relevant to you, first of all. The type of show that gonna, you're going to get the most out of. Um, uh, know what you're doing. Have a plan. Know why you're going to the show. Am I going to purchase equipment? Do I, do I need something to, to help my business? Uh, do I maybe need to look at new processes? Or, or maybe it's just, you know, I'm brand new to the industry. I just need to see what's out there so I can help make my business plan. But, but have a plan and execute that plan. You know, try to stay focused on the reason that you're going to the show in the first place. Yeah, I think you have to really understand why you're going. Is there a challenge with your business? Sure. Maybe it's production-wise. You can't um, really produce all the garments of all the orders you're coming in, which is right. a terrible problem to have. Or maybe you're trying to land a new market or new client. You're looking for new styles. Uh, maybe you're in a very trendy industry or a uh, marketplace and you want to make sure to stay on top of some of those trends. That's something we hear quite often for trade shows is people just say, I'm coming to learn what's new. And that's really one of the benefits sure. when it comes to shows. Um, one thing I think is really important as you're planning out your trip is to kind of get a, a um, lay of the land, mm -hmm. as you call it. So look at the floor plan, look at who's there, and really plan out your day. So not only planning you know, what you're going to be going there for and picking a show, but um, planning who you're going to see once you get there. So if you're looking for an equipment investment, what exhibitors do you want to visit to look exactly. at what they're offering at the show too? Yeah. And, and use the, uh, the, the, the show manual, so to speak, or the, the show, what's what am I looking for? The, the show the directory. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, use the directory. <laughs> and kind of make that hit list, you know, and say, this, uh, yeah, don't have any need for this. I don't even embroider, so I don't need embroidery backing. So I'm going to use the guys I want to see, and here's where they are in the booth or within the show, what booth they, they're at. So you can kind of follow that as a little better. Yeah, especially if you have limited time, I think it's key to map that out and kind of cross off people that maybe you don't, aren't part of your business right now. But likewise, it's important to explore. I think, you know, you may come into a show, especially if you're new, it looked like in the beginning of our um, broadcast here, we had asked how many people had not attended and 20% of you had not attended a trade show. So mm -hmm. if you're new to a show, don't go in with blinders, you know, where you're thinking, this is my print technology or this is what I'm going to do. Exactly. And, you know, don't get to explore the, some of the other things that you may not have found in your research online or and um, other technologies and things like that. Sure. And also, uh, I, I think that education is huge. Yeah, uh, a real big part of trade shows are what can be offered as far as educational seminars prior to and or during the show. Uh, so find the ones that, that, uh, that can really help you. Uh, education is huge. It's a, it's a big, big part of, of progressing your business and uh, really understanding the industry. Yeah, I think that just keeps you knowing what else you can do, especially if you're new or just, you know, been doing this for years and want to see what else you can add to your business is that education. Sure. One thing I think is key that um, a lot of exhibitors will do nowadays as you're planning for pre-shows and starting to look out is show specials. So look, you know, getting on the exhibitors that you want to go to their booth so that you need something from them or you're looking into that technology, like get on their email um, campaigns and say you're getting updated on their show specials. If you've um, registered or pre-registered for a show, likely you've got into some kind of email campaign from a mm -hmm. lot of the exhibitors, so you'll get an update on show specials. Um, you know, look and get onto their social media. Some of them will offer um, pre-show specials on social media or, you know, first 100 people to the booth get this. And that helps keep you on the know if you want to try to make the most of your time. They're getting some freebies and good promotions and stuff, too, yeah. at trade yeah. shows. And maybe there's, a, uh, there's an exhibitor that you're very uh, loyal to. Uh, just give them a call. Maybe you, don't, maybe you didn't get on their email list or maybe you don't know, but ask them in advance. What do you have? What are your show specials? A lot of times the actual show units will go at a nice discounted price. So if you're looking for equipment uh, or, or a major capital investment, that's the best place to pick, pick up a, a deal is at the trade shows. Yeah, absolutely. That's for sure if you're looking to expand and um, things like that. So, Bob, I know you're uh, definitely a logistics kind of guy. You plan out before we attend any trade show we ever go to. So um, what logistically should, our, um, should attendees be looking for when they're going to a trade show? What are some tips you have for that? 
Well, your priorities are maybe a little different than mine. I'm, I, it's all about food for me. I, I know every, the, at least the top five restaurants in every major city so that I go to. So looking for restaurant recommendations. Come to me. Yeah. I got this. I'll give you at least the top three, and then you can discover your own. But, okay, we'll try to put them in order. But know the city. Know what the features are. Know what the, uh, the attractions are there. Because, you know, there's more to trade shows than just... Now, although it's a grueling long day, it can be, but there's also some time at night to enjoy yourself, and it can be a little escape away from your day to day as far as uh, you know working every day of, of the week. So it can be a little little bit of a breath of fresh air. So know know where you're going, know the layout of the city, book early, book your if you have to fly, make sure you book your uh, your flight in oh, advance. Yeah. Kind of watch those flights for a while because they do fluctuate up and down. Get the best deal. Um, know where your hotel is going to be or. or Choose one that's either close to the venue or close to the uh, activities or uh, recreation or the, or the restaurants because cab fares can be, can be expensive. Now, right. if you're driving, and that kind of goes away. And they are long. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a couple of things. Those are good points um, to point out to our viewing audience. I know we do a lot. If you have meetings or education planned, and Bob had mentioned the importance of education, um, a lot of the educational sessions do happen early morning, and they're kind of, you know, time. So if you miss out on a first 15, 20 minutes because of traffic, you, know, you can really miss out on some great content. So that's one of the uh, great reasons to know the city, understand the traffic patterns, understand mm -hmm. how far it takes you. Right. You know, if it's a Monday show, how long is it going to take you to get into the city if you're staying outside of that so you don't miss out any meetings or appointments or education you have sure. planned. So those are some great logistics. So planning, getting ready for the show, I think is the hardest part. I mean, getting there, getting your travel, you finally figure out who you want to bring with you, um, what you're going to do, and all of those good things. So we get there to the show. Um, and what are some tips you have for, you know, at the show? Their days are long. Oh, boy. They're exhausting. I mean, they really are. Some of these shows, depending <laughs> on what you're attending, can have hundreds of exhibitors. You walk that show floor, and it just feels like, you know, it, it feels like you've spent weeks, and all you've been is a few hours wandering around there. Yeah, well, don't get us wrong. It's, it's not that bad. No one's going to go to a show the way we've been making these sound <laughs> exhausting. I'll never go again. No, it's, well it, it's it's well a good kind of it, exhausting. Yeah. You're getting a lot of information, and you're making a lot of progress there. Um, yeah, they can be. I mean, especially the bigger shows, you're a lot of aisles and a lot of places to see. You're on your feet a lot, so comfortable shoes. I won't wear my six-inch stilettos uh, or anything like that. Uh, it can actually be um, chilly inside the, the trade show floor. Uh, even though it's in you know, some of the southern climates, they tend to keep the air conditioning up. People are always warming their hands up around the, around the heat press. Um, <sighs> One thing is, you know, like you mentioned earlier, make sure you bring somebody with you. It, it helps to have someone in your with, with your company, whether it be your business partner or someone that you trust, that you can kind of bounce ideas off of and make sure we stay focused on what we're looking for and what's going to fit our business model most. One thing that I, I find that, that people uh, forget is business cards. It seems crazy, but folks really forget to bring their business cards. And you know, we'll talk as we go a little bit more about network, how important it is, but it's also important as you're talking to uh, exhibitors and vendors uh, to have a business card and or take theirs as well. Yeah, I think we're coming to the world of digital where everybody just assumes, you know, they don't need business right. cards any longer, but they really are helpful at trade shows for making notes and things like that. Likewise, um, you want to try to keep and get as many notes as possible. So, you know, having a notebook on hand, um, things like that. I know um, some people are proponents of writing it on business cards so you remember the name That's on the me. person. I'm a notebook kind of girl, so I make all my notes in notebooks and mm -hmm. then go back to them later. But, you know, being prepared with that kind of stuff, taking a note, taking your notes at education or from what you heard at a booth, there's so much information from different exhibitors, so it's hard to retain it all, especially if you're taking it back to somebody after the exactly. show to exactly. help make decisions. You can collect a lot of uh, literature, a lot of catalogs, and a lot of samples, and if you're a pack rat and you insist on having this stuff, I'm not mentioning any names, I might be that person. Uh, bring yourself something uh, to carry it with, uh, a roller cart or even a small little uh, travel suitcase, something that's just kind of ease the pain of uh, carrying all that, all that weight around yeah, with you. Yeah, you definitely don't want anything with plastic handles. I see people all the time that will come to trade shows that offer the plastic bags oh, yeah. up front and they've weighed them down with you know, large uh, catalogs and by the end they're just trying to find a way to hold that plastic that's not hurting their hands. So that's exactly. definitely a key point. But I think you know, really even just being selective in the – the it helps. <laughs> documents that you're picking up, so not picking up every catalog. You know, um, the apparel catalogs for one are usually huge. I mean, I've picked up and brought back some CMR catalogs from shows in the past, and I feel like they've weighed my book bag down. 
So maybe even just seeing if they can mail you right. those, you know, instead of carrying them with you if you don't need them immediately to take orders. Or pick them up at the very end of the day. Just yeah. plan it out accordingly so I'm on my way to the car. Let's grab our catalogs. Yeah, that's a good point as well. So that way you're not lugging around the large catalogs throughout the day. One other thing, too, that um, we run into, especially with larger purchases, like for equipment, which what I, what I specialize in is um, you, you need payment there at the show if you're going to take a show unit. and. Make sure that you call in advance. Make sure your credit card is clear. That they they, they understand you got you could possibly so make a large purchase, so you're not delayed with that. Yeah, so checks yeah. don't really work. We have to make sure that, that clears if you're taking show equipment from to home with you. Uh, cash doesn't really make that big a difference to most people. It's uh, it's dangerous to carry that much around. It really isn't isn't going to really help you that much as far as getting a deal. We all pay tax no matter what. Yeah, it's a good, very good point to point out as well. Um, so. Um, when it comes to kind of like those people that are coming maybe just to collect information, maybe you're new and attending, I think it's important to, um, you know, not feel obligated to pick up every catalog that's coming towards you, but also spend the time at the booth that's reliable. So collect the information you need. Don't do a scan, uh, you know, quickly run by and scan my badge through all the booths. If you're limited on time, I think that's where that plan right. is key, where you can hit the booths you want to spend on. And I think if you're limited on time, you can tell the salespeople, you know, hey, I only have five or ten minutes, but I really want to learn about this technology. Sure. Can you, you know, tell me what's best for me in this way? And I think the salespeople will value the fact that, you know, you know, you have a goal and that they'll help you get to where you need to be quickly. Sure. And it is, it is important while you are there at that booth that you're building a rapport with, uh, with the, uh, the vendor, the exhibitor there. These are people that uh, you're going to be using throughout the rest of the year, maybe the rest of your career, and it's good to have a friend in the industry. So kind of build that friendship. A little bit of relationship goes a long way when it comes to uh, you know, continuing your business. Yeah, and talking about just building rapport and relationships and things, a lot of these shows now are starting to offer more events for socializing. Right. So it gives you the opportunity to socialize with um, you know, exhibitors, speakers that may be in the industry, but not, you know, if you're worried about talking to salespeople, they're a little bit more um, informational, um, different contractors. So that gives you a good opportunity to meet with other apparel decorators, learn their challenges, learn what worked well for them. You may have some of those same challenges, so it gives you some real world experience. Or you may find a good partner that you can use for contract work. Maybe you're strictly embroidery and you're looking for a screen printer. You may find that person at either these networking events or some of these educational sessions. That's a great opportunity at trade shows. I think a lot of people are coming looking for specials or looking for information, and they miss out on that social aspect that we have now. Absolutely. Uh, so especially educational events, uh, it becomes very interactive a lot of times, especially the ones that we run. We allow, in fact, we encourage folks to talk amongst themselves. They learn more from each other sometimes than they do from us. And it also gives them a chance to not only... Um, you know, get to know them, but you can actually work out a nice co-op. You know, I don't do embroidery while well, you do embroidery. I do screen printing. Let's 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 work together. Right, uh, you're absolutely. only 10 miles away from me. Who knew? That type of situation. You can also network in uh, at the actual trade show booth on the floor. Folks gathering around, listening to the same spiel. Next thing you know, you get the same the same two customers talking among each other, and they they're interacting and clicking nicely and, and really feeding off each other's success. Yeah, it gives some great um, ideas and things to learn when you're at the the show. So. So far, we've talked a lot about planning. We've talked a lot about um, at the show. So we get to the post show, which everybody kind of feels like, oh, I've made it. I found all the information I needed. Maybe I you know, was able to secure that equipment I wanted for a great price. But you know, what are some tips for after the show? We walk away from that show, and do we just go home and just go back to business? You know, what can we do, and what can we apply what we've learned there? Yeah, and that's key, and that's where note-taking is really big because you're going to end up with this big bushel basket full of right. literature and things, and after a little while, you forget what that was even about. At least I do because I, I need those good notes. Um, so it's important to uh, re review all of your notes and discuss that with your other members of your, of your company, whether it be your business partner or someone you trust, um, and really focus in on which way direction we're going to go. We, we gathered a whole lot of information. Let's kind of uh, discern now which is the best direction to go. Be aware of uh, show deadlines. Uh, mo a lot of cases, no nope, purchase at the show. This is the only time you're going to get this price. Sometimes we'll hold them a day or two after, right, maybe so as it's long as a week. To know that, so yeah, you so don't know when out. they are. Yeah, exactly. And at that point, um, yeah, you don't necessarily you know, be proactive. Don't wait for somebody to call you because oh, they all want my business. Well, you know, exhibitors talk to hundreds of people, where you talk to maybe dozens of, of uh, exhibitors. So it may take them a while to get to you. So if you're interested in and truly want to uh, pursue this, give them a call. Yeah, I think you can, I think a lot of um, people when they attend trade shows try to wait and see if the sales rep calls them. And I think if it's something urgent, you have to keep in mind that, you know, anybody who's, a, who's attending the show as an exhibitor traditionally gets home a day after you. 
they've got a lot of you know follow up so you may fall somewhere in the middle of the road don't feel like you're pestering them if you want to reach out you know that next day or right after you leave the show and say hey I just wanted to remind you I'm interested in this right. you know, they'll, they'll move you usually to the top of their list so that you can get you know things rolling much quicker once you get back from the show especially if it's something urgent that you don't want to miss out on a show special or something like exactly. that exactly exactly yeah and as you're connecting remember that those people you connected with um, outside of the exhibitors and the show specials so think about um, those contacts you made, maybe somebody you wanted to do contract business with or speakers, and you can find ways to connect with them through email or through um, LinkedIn, different social sites as well, so that way you're able to kind of you know, connect with them on a different level and share business tips and stuff and keep that relationship going after the show too. Absolutely. Great. So um, I think we've given some great um, ideas so far as far as what to do before a show, at a show, after the show, but I think you know, before you get there, you got to know what show you can attend. And, and you had mentioned it very in the very, very beginning, and it's important to find the show really that's right for you. There's so many in the apparel decorating there industry. Are. There are. There are, are many that are targeted just for your industry, whether it be embroidery or screen printing or even if you're doing signs and banners, that type of thing. But there's also a lot that blend nicely, and that's become more and more the case. Even the very pinpointed embroidery marts, for example, the smaller venues, uh, they still can you know, trickle into because everybody's multitasking, everybody's being uh, more diverse. Uh, so it's important to find one, first of all, that's, you know, hopefully that's close to you, that's in a timely manner. Right. Uh, although some people use the excuse to get away from everything and drive as far away or fly away as, possible, as far as possibly they can. Um, but find one that's close to help, to help uh, uh, eliminate some of the expense or at least minimize the expense of traveling. And, you know, find one that's going to be appropriate, that's going to work well for you. The smaller venues are nice because you get more one-on-one -on -one type of, uh, of information from, from uh, exhibitors. You can spend a lot more quality time with them. It may minimize how much uh, actual exposure you have because, you know, maybe you don't actually have a plan. So the bigger shows can be better if I'm just really trying to get my, wrap my head around the whole industry and say, what's next for me? I really don't know. I know I need something, but let's help discern that. So, you know. Kind of viewing them all, I mean, the different types of shows. What did we talk about? I mean, the MBM, MBM shows are nice. Like I said, that's a three-way type of show. Yeah. Uh, ISS shows are, are very big, even printed sportswear shows. Focuses on the apparel market nicely. And then the, some of the real big shows where you can really get lost in if you're not careful. And this is where the planning comes into place, like the SGIA show. It's a once-a-year type of show. Right. This year's in Atlanta, and it goes back and forth between Vegas and Orlando and what's the other ones? Uh, Atlanta, New Orleans. New Orleans, Atlanta yeah, it'll be New Orleans next year, yeah. Yeah, so it may be worthwhile, you know, as you're starting to look at trade shows to think about, you know, maybe doing a small regional one if it's nearby. It gives you a chance to maybe talk to some of those vendors, get some really great education mm -hmm. in a smaller setting, and then also branching out to maybe a larger one that's going to allow you to expand a little bit more and see more within the industry. I know usually that first of the year, January is a huge trade show month, January, February, and everybody usually launches their their newest for the year. So if you're planning on, you know, doing a trade show, we've got fall trade show season starting up now in some areas, but you may want to start 2016 and really hit the ground running for, you know, your big shows and what your big planning is. And this gives you a few months to do that as well. Right. Helps um, you gear up for spring things. sports as well. And that's why, spr uh, you know, early uh, winter and early fall are big because you're, you're dealing with both uh, spring, spring sports with baseball, et cetera, and then the back to school, the football season type of thing. Those are kind of the two big uh, events throughout the year that helps kind of gauge when trade shows actually happen. Yeah, it's a good point as well. So hopefully um, we'll look forward to seeing each of you at a trade show soon. I would definitely recommend you get your feet wet, dive in a little bit on the shows and start getting your planning and looking to see what's out there. As Bob mentioned, the ISS shows, the NBM show um, are two really great show sets. There's also shows that are more regional like the Embroidery Mart show shows for NNEP, um, the De Decorated yeah. Apparel Expo is in the Midwestern um, area, the DAC shows. So those are some great alternatives for mm -hmm. you. And also promotional product shows are out That's there. That whether you too. may be a member of PPI, ASI, just to get the buying power and the mm -hmm. whole thing. Uh, and again, more and more of those shows are, are a lot, you know, they feature more of our customer base, the, the apparel decorators. It's becoming a bigger part of the promotional products. Yeah, work. it's good if you're getting into that niche too to get some, you know, just some different insight and different classes in right. those markets. Great. Well, Bob, I appreciate you, you know, joining us today for the discussion. We're going to move to our next segment now, which is actually called Modern Marketing Insider. So Modern Marketing Insider is going to be a segment of the Stalls TV Morning Show where we talk about 
ways you can um, grow your business or expand it with new modern marketing technologies. So we're specifically going to be looking at technologies um, that are digital. So email marketing, mobile marketing, social media, all of those things that are growing, but they're very technical. And they present a lot of opportunities for every business to really build relationships and increase their sales, but they're very niche. So there's always some, um, a lot of things changing very quickly. So in this segment, sometimes we'll cover trends, technologies that have changed, or just simple how-to tips to get started. So today's first segment is actually going to be on email marketing, which is one of the most popular when it comes to more modern technologies for marketing um, techniques. But um, with email marketing, it's actually one of the very um, most lucrative, really, for business owners. But a lot of businesses, especially if you're a small business, you're probably keeping away from doing this. And, and I hear it a lot of the times because of um, expense. So it's a, you know, a lot of work for me to do this. I don't know how to get into email marketing. Um, it's a large expense for me, so I've cut that part of my budget. I've got to work on you know, the production or the selling aspect of it. But used correctly, email marketing can be very inexpensive. Um, the Direct Marketing Association actually came out last year with a statistic that showed that it gave a return on investment for U.S. businesses by about 4,300%. So they can be very inexpensive. They give a high return on investment. And using an email marketing service, it can be easy to create. So you don't have to have a ton of knowledge um, in HTML and a lot of email background that kind of scares people away. So let's dive in. I'm going to switch to my computer and let's dive into um, six steps to get started with email marketing. So when it comes to email marketing, the first step to getting started is to define your audience. So you have to really understand who you're talking to before you can go anywhere else. And that's like that with any marketing technology or sales um, business. But when you're defining your audience, you want to know who they are. Um, are they customers or are they somebody who's actively buying with you that are familiar with your business? Or are they prospects from a trade show or from your sales reps, maybe cold calls they have made or that you have made? Um, the conversation and the, the content that you're going to deliver to your customer who's aware of you and who um, knows you and your, your business is going to be different from a prospect that you're trying to get to place an order and trying to get to build this relationship with. So the very, um, a very important step to getting started is defining who you're going to be sending these emails to. And you're not limited. You could have an email that's going to go directly to your customers and you can have an email set that's going to go directly to your prospects um, if the time and the budget allows for that. Once you've defined your audience, it's the, time, it's the time to determine your content. So what are you going to say to them? And when it comes to determining your content, you have to understand what does your customer want to see. So what's the most relevant and important information to them? A lot of the times marketers go um, above and beyond and push out the message that, um, or business people in general, push out the, mark, the information they want the customer to see. Um, versus what the customer wants to see. So you have to deliver something that's going to provide value to them, that's relevant to them, that's going to want them to stay um, on your, subscribe to your email list and getting more information for you, from you and opening those emails every month or two months that you're sending them. Um, you also want to make sure your messaging as you're creating your content is short and concise. So I know we always have so much we want to say to our customers. You may want to blast out a new promotion or maybe a new shipping program that you're offering and you want to explain everything in detail. Sometimes um, detail is too much and a lot of the times in marketing longer is never better. So you want to try to keep your message short, concise, keep headlines that are easy and clear to read um, and then develop a clear call to action. So as you're developing the content, think about what you want them to do. If you have an e-commerce site and you want them to go directly on there and place an order, then direct them to your website with an order now. If you don't have a website that allows you to do e-commerce, then you might be giving them a phone number to directly call a sales rep with their order in. So that's important. Um, and you may just want them to maybe visit your website to learn more. And those are different things that you'll um, want to determine as you're building the content for your emails. So we have our audience. We understand our content of what we want to deliver to that audience, whether it's a customer or a prospect. And the third step is going to be to determine our goals and our frequency. So when you're determining frequency for your email marketing campaigns, you have to create and develop a schedule that fits not only you, but your customers as well. So it's important to understand what you can do and what you can set up um, as far as the timeline goes. So you have to create a timeline for yourself, your writers, your designers, whoever's creating your emails 
and making sure it's something that's not going to bog down your other time and that you can commit to. Likewise, you want to make sure you remember your content. So you don't want to overwhelm your um, viewing audience or your, um, your audience with too many emails to where they may unsubscribe or um, you, know, you may fall into the spam box at some point. So you want to email usually about once a month. Um, you don't want to try to skip too many months, but most importantly, you want to keep the, the second step in mind. If you have good content, it's okay to email more frequently. But if you don't have good content, and you can't send them anything that's really going to prevent va provide value to them, um, then you just want to go ahead and eliminate, maybe skip a month if you don't have anything that's going to do that. And I always recommend really creating a, a general guideline of what you want to send so you can help create your frequency and your schedule a little bit better. So you know, if you're going to send promotions, um, newsletters. So you may send a monthly newsletter, you may send a promotion during busy season. So right now is back to school season and a few months is your Christmas retail season. So you may be sending them, you know, at sports season whenever it's getting ready to order team uniforms. Think about that as you're starting to schedule out your frequency as well and when you want to drop in those promotions. So those are kind of the easy things. We have our content, we have our customer audience, we have our uh, frequency and our goals set. We know we want to create or, or generate something from these emails and then we're going to create the HTML. So this is where a lot of people that are not um, experts kind of shy away and try, start to get scared when it comes to email marketing. But it's very easy with a lot of email marketing services. Um, if you're going to be doing um, and creating the HTML on your own, you want to remember that there is such a thing as a successful format. Most email marketing services today will push you towards this format because it creates the highest um, return for them as well and for the, you know, they want you to have a successful campaign and that's a blend of text and HTML. So HTML is basically the beautiful images that you see in an email um, and so you don't want to just post this stuff, copy and paste the images in an email and send it because if the web platform doesn't allow you to see those images, you're going to get a blank email and the messaging is completely lost. Likewise, if it's just text and you're copy and pasting the coding, you don't want to do that either. So this blend allows me to basically see the beautiful HTML images that you've set up and it looks perfect and pretty, but if for some reason my um, web platform may be on mobile or something doesn't allow that, the message is still there in text. So I'm not going to lose your key message if you're sending it with that blend. But you know, if you're not familiar with this type of thing and it's a little too technical, just remember these email marketing services that we'll talk about here shortly are going to help you create this, ensure it gets delivered, and ensure that you have a successful email campaign because they want you to continue to use their services as well. The fifth step once you've created your beautiful HTML and your images is just to do a quick proof, which is key in anything, um, and then send it out. So you want to proof your images to make sure that they look beautiful. You want to make sure that they're conveying the message that the copy and the writing on your email is. You want to make sure your landing pages are taking them where you said you're going to. If you want them to order on your website, you want to make sure that link's taking them where they should go for that ordering. And then one thing that email marketing services that, um, like MailChimp, which we'll talk about, will do is actually test emails, um, email rendering on different web platforms. So making sure the email is going to show up correctly on Google versus Yahoo versus Outlook and different platforms and things like that. So the very final step in your email marketing campaigns is to measure and track for success. So you have to listen to what the data is telling you. Um, if an email doesn't perform well, you know, you may, you could try a different time of day. So some people recommend sending usually Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, midday between 10 and 2 they have found is um, about the most successful time period for emails. But you, know, you may want to try either a different time, a different audience, but you have to um, look at the data that you're given. So most um, email clients or email services will tell you, you know, you've got this click rate, you've got this open rate, you've got this bounce rate, these many people unsubscribe, which of course you don't want, and you want to just make sure it's a successful campaign. That's one of the big benefits about these email marketing services. And the email marketing services um, are built in a way that they give you templates that you can easily create these with. You can um, collect your data and find out whether or not an email campaign is going to work well. So it gives you those abilities as well. Um, and some of the ones that are out there are MailChimp, um, Eye Contact, Get Response, co Constant Contact. Um, there's actually a um, 
side-by-side -side comparison done by PC Magazine for 2015 that compares the different um, email services as well. So you can find that online at PCMag.com, but you can kind of compare if you're looking into email services and see which ones provide, um, you know, email templates, which ones provide tracking, which ones provide free trials if you want to just test it out and play around with it before you purchase. When it comes to the cost of these, most of them offer a monthly service, so you'll be um, paying typically it's somewhere between $9 and $15 a month, but it varies depending on the number of emails you send and the number of contacts you're sending them to. But you can get into it very inexpensively um, for just a trial period, just maybe to do your promotions or send out every so often to your customers every month, every other month, and work it into your budget that way. So email marketing is a really great way um, to, you know, generate relationships with your customers and continue to build them to get sales promotions out there, especially at seasonal, seasonal times of year, and just really um, continue to build your brand with your customers and stay top of mind. I recommend every company um, works with that kind of avenue as an additional way to nurture their customers along with your salespeople and along with your customer service and your other marketing efforts. I think you can find a lot of success with it, and I'm looking forward to sharing uh, more insight on the Modern Marketing Insider on tips and tricks with email marketing. So thanks for watching The Morning Show. I appreciate Bob coming on and joining us. He's had a lot of really great insight with trade shows. I know Bob and I are looking forward to seeing every one of you at a trade show. Um, we go to a large majority of them throughout the imprinted sportswear industry. We give educational seminars, and so we're looking forward to I'm seeing you. If you come to the trade show, feel free to stop by, tell Bob and I hi, let us know you saw us on the morning show. We look forward to spending more time with you guys next week. Thanks for watching.